welcome Dr. Cameron Webb to Make It Make Sense. This is not your first time being on for which we are grateful, uh, but anytime that the White House comes out with new information about what is happening with COVID that it seems like America has decided is over, but no, not so much. Um, we're thankful that we can have you on and we know that you will give us the answers that we need so that we can be healthy as possible and live better lives. Um, so today I saw that the administration came out with um, their strategy, with President Biden's strategy for handling BA5, the new variant of COVID. I guess there's a four and a five. So why don't we start there? What, what's the difference? What, what is this, right? So if you look at, you know, since November, we've been dealing with Omicron. And Omicron is, is a variant like Delta before it, like Alpha before it. But Omicron is a little different in that it has lots of little sub-variants. The original ones we saw we called BA1, then BA2 became dominant, and then one called BA2.12.1. The thing is, now BA4 and 5 make up 80% of our cases. And the thing about BA5, it's the it's actually more than 50% itself of the cases we're seeing here in the US. But BA5 is a little bit different. It, it has the ability to evade some of the immunity that you get from a natural infection or from a vaccination event. And so it's able to infect more people. And more than that, it's able to infect them over and over again. You see more reinfection with BA5. It used to be, we would say, about 90 days uh, between a COVID infection and when you can get infected again. With BA5, it's just a couple of weeks. So we're seeing people get reinfected within three weeks, four weeks. And so it means that we have to be vigilant in a way that's a little different than what we've been with COVID before. The thing about- The people that you're seeing being reinfected, excuse me for interrupting, the people that you were seeing within weeks being reinfected, are these people who are fully vaccinated, including boosting? So it, it, it can be. The thing is, you're less likely to have a severe infection if you're fully vaccinated and boosted. That's what the vaccines do. They protect you in terms of the kind of COVID that you're going to have. But you can still get a COVID infection. You may not have many symptoms. You may not have severe disease, but you may have COVID. That's important to know because that's why testing remains so important for everybody, vaccinated or unvaccinated. But if you're unvaccinated, let's say you get BA5, one time this week, and it's a pretty mild case. And you say, I'm just fine, COVID doesn't bother me. Well, three, four weeks from now, you can get BA5 again and have an absolutely severe case that lands you in the hospital or worse, right? So it's such an important moment because every one of those infections runs the risk of causing severe disease. Every Land you in the hospital if you are fully vaccinated and boosted. I'm asking this, I'm gonna ask yeah. this for, for each scenario that you're saying, is it still true with BA5 that your chances of ending up seriously ill, such as in the hospital, um, are less if you are fully vaccinated, which you explained to me last time, okay. includes not just the one boost, but the two, if you're 50 and over, or if you've got um, pre-existing conditions that make you more susceptible to illness. And to clarify, right, just a minute ago, I was giving you two different examples. So the first example was folks who are vaccinated. The second where I was talking about going to the hospital was for unvaccinated individuals. Okay. So vaccinated individuals, and I should say fully vaccinated, up-to-date vaccination. So if you're under 50, vaccinated plus boosted. If you're 50 plus, vaccinated plus boosted, plus boosted again if it's been more than five months, right? For those individuals, your risk of severe disease is significantly lower, right? It doesn't mean it's impossible. Some people don't mount a very good response to vaccines, immunocompromised folks, folks with HIV with low CD4 counts, people who've had solid organ transplants, lots of different circumstances where people don't get as robust an immune response. But for fully vaccinated, fully boosted people, your risk of a hospitalization or death is way low. That's good news. Okay. So if you are fully vaccinated plus boosted, and I'm tracking you, plus if you're 50 and over, second boost, you know, if it's been more than five months, what if your second boost has been more than five months? Well, we shouldn't have very many people who fall into that category quite yet. But for those that do, right now, there's no recommendation for yet another boost. So FDA or CDC haven't made recommendations that people continue getting boosted 
time and time again. For some vaccines, you just see an effect that happens after you've had a certain number of shots. Think about hepatitis B or others. It's three or four shots in a series, and that's when your body knows how to fight against this virus. So I think they're still studying that to see if there's any benefit to ongoing vaccinations and in regular intervals. But as of today, and you know, it's, it's July 12th, as of today, there's no recommendation for a third booster for anybody in this country as of yet. Okay. Now, now I, I think there's a lot of emphasis on the vaccines and appropriately so. It's a really important way to stay safe. If you are vaccinated or unvaccinated, and you get COVID-19, if you're a person who has other medical conditions or a risk for severe disease, you should talk to your provider, your doctor or nurse practitioner, physician assistant, about whether or not the COVID treatments are appropriate for you. And these are pills that you can take. Uh, you can take them for five days. They reduce the likelihood of a hospitalization or death by 90%. So even beyond the vaccines, we have new tools that we didn't have you know, eight months ago that just came at the end of 2021, but that are available for you to keep you safe as well. One is called Paxivid, it's a pill. Um, we've got the monoclonal antibodies, those are important. Those people who I mentioned a second ago, where I said folks with organ transplants, folks who are on immunosuppressive medicines and HIV with low CD4 count, those folks, they can take a shot. It's a pre-exposure prophylaxis called Evyshell that can help protect them as well. And so there are lots of tools that we have today that we didn't have a year ago in this fight that people should just know about so they can stay prepared. And so when we talk about BA5, what we're saying is there's a new threat with COVID-19 and it's causing a lot of cases, a lot of hospitalizations all over the country. You have to, at this moment, you have to know what the list of tools are to keep you safe. It's wearing masks, it's making sure you're testing regularly, it's having up-to-date vaccinations, and it's using treatments if you're at risk for severe disease. You do those four things. Okay. Okay, Dr. Webb. I, I, I'm with you. You know, I'm I'm trying. I'm, Lord knows I'm doing my best to share the information, but I but but I want to talk about our, our community for a minute because I don't know if you've ever heard of this thing called Essence. There, there's a festival. Um, yep. and 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 the festival now also is being known as Super Spreader because I personally know at least 20 people mm -hmm. who were there who immediately following um, had some, ver I don't even know if they were BA5, I can't say, I wasn't in their business like that, but I can rattle off quickly 20 people who came home, had COVID, gave it to somebody in their family, who gave it to somebody else, and so on and so on, the way a spreader goes, which brings me to masks. The president's strategy says that you're going to be providing clear recommendations around masking. I want to know what that is. And then second, um, is anybody going to pay attention to it? Because as far as I can see, and, I, and I'm, I'm guilty sometimes, I do my best, but far and wide, it looks like the country has just decided, yeah, mask, schmask, and outside, inside, whatever, because there's not a legal requirement to do it people are ignoring the advice. Yeah, well, okay. I, I, I hear you. I'm gonna push back on a couple of areas. So the first thing I'll say is that Black America is the most masked segment of the population, period. We wear our masks. We have been, we will continue to. I got a mask right here on my desk. I got another one right here. Did you pocket. did you miss Essence? Are you are no, you pushing no. back on me because you didn't see everybody at the Janet Jackson concert? That, that's not my point. That's in control with no mask on. I which want one? you to hear me. I want you to hear okay. me. But I'm talking okay. about in community, and I'm not talking about the Essence Festival. But I'm saying in yep. community, we mm -hmm. wear more masks. So the first thing I want you to take away from that is that in our community, people aren't as averse to mask wearing as you see in some other segments of the population. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. When we talk about clear guidance on masking, so, so if you start with people who are willing to wear masks, and I would say by and large, the black community has shown they're willing to wear masks. The next thing we talk about is, well, when do you need to wear masks? Mm -hmm. There's, if you go to covid.gov, you can actually enter your county and it'll tell you what your COVID community levels are. If your COVID community levels are anything above low, which the majority of the, of the population is right now, it recommends or strongly recommends mask wearing in your county at any given time. So I, what I'll say is that when my county where I live in Virginia went into medium level for COVID community levels, 
that's when I started wearing my mask. Every time I went to the grocery store or walked into the gas station, I started using that, those practices again. So that's what we're encouraging folks to do is to kind of go back to that caution that we had earlier on because our levels are higher than they were a little while ago. But that's okay, what I'm at COVID.gov. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, yes, I'm at COVID.gov. And mm -hmm. what you're saying I should go to is what? So on COVID.gov, at the top of the page, you see that there's a box where you can enter to find out what your COVID community find is. Find guidance in your community. Yep. And so you type in your county right there. It says search for your county. And so you type in yours. And once you find that, it's going to tell you, I'm doing the long okay. with you right now. And it's going to I did my you. parents' community. I typed in Galveston County. And surprise, surprise, it's orange. Mm -hmm. Galveston County, Texas. And so the CDC recommends wear a mask when indoors in public mm -hmm. and stay up to date. So that, that means not outdoors in public. Correct. Well, so remember outdoors in public, the risk is lower for a lot of reasons, just because of how COVID spreads. We don't have a tremendous amount of evidence that in outdoor spaces, ventilation is such a key part of people staying safe in COVID. Now, what's even if you're, even if you're at like outdoor concert, like, yeah, that, I was, I was, I was about to say, what's different is if you're in extremely close, close proximity to other people, kind of negates the effect of being in outdoor spaces. And so what we, the advice that we've given and have consistently done so for, for event organizers, really making sure that you're giving people that guidance around how to stay safe in your specific environment. Imagine, for instance, if we said wear masks in indoor and outdoor spaces, and you're you know, one family out at a park, 20 feet from another family, you don't need to be wearing a mask in that setting, right? The, the environments where you're packed in really tightly, well, of course, those are gonna be the kind of spaces where you are more likely to come into contact with folks. Not to mention, at a lot of these festivals and events, it's not just the outdoor component that creates risk for people. They're also going to indoor events, they're going to bars, they're going to other spaces. Those are all, when you stack on top of it, multiple opportunities over the course of a weekend trip to come in contact with COVID, that's where you see it. It's not just that you went to the concert, it's that you, everything that came with it. And it's that everybody and it goes there, along with it. And, and it's everybody who's there is bringing their own COVID community levels with them. So you may be coming from a low COVID community uh, space, but somebody from another community in Florida or Texas or Alabama may have high COVID community levels. And they're bringing that right next to you, standing and talking right. and singing and yelling. Remember, singing is a really effective way to spread COVID. We've already seen that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm giggling. I normally wouldn't include this in an administration interview, but when you brought your high community COVID to my low community COVID, when you did that example, I started thinking about how the United States has our good air and, and our good air found its way to China. Well, Just I, saying. I um, Okay, I won't, I won't put you on the spot asking for a comment on no, this foolishness, I, I but- I think, I think Herschel Walker was a heck of a football player. <laughs> Heisman Trophy and everything, but my God. Okay, so every time you come on, I know I'm out of time, but I just wanna say, guys, even if you can see this, where you can look up your COVID, my thing is going on, but you can look up, find guidance in your community. And I'm gonna add the, I'll add the, the graphics and stuff, but I didn't know that we could do this. The last time you disabused me of any possibility of us waiting for herd immunity. I appreciated it. I shared it. This time, I can't wait to share with people that you can on covid.gov into your community and get some very specific recommendations on masking. And yes. It, and it's updated every Thursday afternoon. So every week it's updated. And so, you know, just encourage people, you, you know, take advantage of these tools that are available to you. We're going to keep doing everything we can to keep communities safe, but it's so critical that we, that we make sure that people know. So thank you for the work that you're doing to spread the word because this is really is the key. Well, and thank you so much. We appreciate you, Dr. Webb. Thanks for coming. And please know you're welcome here anytime. You always teach us something we absolutely need to know to make it make sense. Love it. Thanks for having me. Take care. Bye-bye. Right.